thanks to you for keeping a date with us on the program with yes and Sally. Of course, we'll go back to the just concluded okay, the state governorship election which held on Saturday across the uh, 16 local government areas and over one or something uh, wards in that state. The election has come and gone, and as we speak, uh, winners and losers have emerged. The winners are celebrating, and those who lost um, are perhaps licking their wounds and maybe thinking of the next line of action to take. But what is uh, paramount today is that the APC won that election, and the PDP has rejected the election. Other candidates and uh, political parties that participated in the election have won, complained, or the other. But on Saturday, we monitored that election a little bit. Uh, one of the things that came forth was that the people turned out en masse to participate in the election. And uh, we heard that from one or two persons we spoke with. Uh, but there's been the other side of it, which has also dominated uh, national discourse, both social media and in the traditional media, which is the practice of vote buying. I mean, uh, an observer from the BBC uh, made a categorical comment along those lines. But just look at something quite striking, which uh, people have been talking about, that the APC polled a total of 197,459 votes. And then the PDP polled a total of 178,114 votes. If you add that together, it gives you 375,573. But in the INEC published results, uh, when they summed that up, it came to about 316,019 as the total votes cast. So this brings the difference to a negative. And people have been asking questions how did this kind of uh, mathematics take place? I mean, who solved this kind of mathematics? But that's uh, part of our discussions today. Let me quickly bring up to speed uh, panelists I have, very, uh, have in the studio a legal practitioner, uh, social commentator, political analyst, Barrister Matthew Degas. Barrister Matthew, many thanks for joining us on the program. Thanks for having me, Duke. I also have with us in the studio uh, an educationist and a public affairs commentator, Paul Okumboa. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me here, sir. Okay. Um, Master Matthew, let me start with you. The, the outcome of the Ikiti State uh, governorship election, uh, were you surprised at all, or this met your expectations? I wouldn't say I'm surprised or disappointed. I can only say I'm ashamed. Mm. of the entire process, the way it played out. First, the shame of a nation is when you deploy 30,000 policemen to an area where people are discharging their civic obligation, which is not a warfare, and you have an ongoing slaughtering of Nigerian citizens in the Middle Belt and in the Northeast. I'm sure, I mean, it was even told pathetic that that very day, that mm. period, there was slaughtering of Nigerians in Sokoto, about 30 something human beings, Nigerians, were slaughtered by bandits, whatever they call them. If those people were having uh, access to 30,000 policemen on ground, I'm not sure that's, that, that, that genocide would have taken place. So if a nation now prioritizes irrelevancy and ignore reality, then I think that is a very big shame. That is on one side. Then the very whole practice of now buying and selling of uh, votes, which has become, uh, the people call it, uh, political stock, stock exchange market, <laughs> where you take your votes and people are there to buy in exchange for cash. I think that itself is uh, it's a dead democracy. The right to choose and elect your leaders, who, who in turn will be accountable to you, when they are elected into office, has been extinguished by that very practice. When you sell an item, you have no control over it anymore. 
It is the buyer that decides what to do. Either he destroys it, he preserves it, or even consumes it. It's his own discretion, not prerogative. So when voters take their vote like wells to the market, electoral market to, to sell, and they return a complaint of uh, leadership that are not responsive and responsible, I think the question they should ask is, do they owe us any obligation after we have sold our vote to them? So you're blaming the people now? Yes, I am blaming the political class less because we know most of them have no morals. They are morally low. So if you take your, 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 cheek, your cheek to the hawks, the hawk naturally will devoid. The political hawks we have in Nigeria, who are parade as polit political class, actually want to, they feed on the people. So when the victim now surrenders themselves for free meal, uh, you should blame the, the, the vampires less. You should blame those who have surrendered their flesh for the consumption of these political cannibals. That is the way it is. Okay. Let, let, me, let me push it there. Before I start. Like I said, let's just start and be a little bit um, um, civil in our language because this is um, a public platform and uh, it's important that we are constructive in our comments and expressions and analysis just for the benefit of the people. That's the reason we're here. Okay, let, let, let me bring uh, Paul in here. Um, what aspect of the conduct of the election struck you the most? Because the deployment of security agents to the state was meant to ensure lives and property were secured. And uh, in spite of that, uh, we gather that it really didn't deter people from coming out to cast their vote. So I, I, I don't know what you make of all of this. Well, the, the, only, the only good thing that one could say so far is there has been no record of any life lost in the process of this election. But that is not to say that this election has gone in a recommendable fashion. And um, I'm particularly very shocked because this election is a projection of what's to be expected in the 2019 election. For me, this is a template. You know, I, I don't want to give credit to any political party or any candidate here, but I want to speak as a neutral Nigerian who is very concerned about our nascent democracy. Uh, in the era of the PDP, of course, we had records of electoral misconduct and what have you. But let's not forget that the ruling party currently actually rolled on these expressions that Nigerians were hated to tired of and wanted a change, you know. And uh, the president presented himself in the light of integrity, in quote, and uh, Nigerians were sunk into this equation in hopes that things would be done very differently. The electoral process of any country determines the pace of our economic and social development because the men and women who man the affairs of the country will determine what direction the country will be steered. I'm particularly disappointed in the conduct of the ruling party. One, you came in and promised Nigerians that things will be done differently. I would expect that by now, this political party must have put a template on ground we are in perpetrators of electoral uh, gimmicks. We we'll find it very difficult to play in this sort of arena. I would, I would expect that by now there are policies and implemented programs that will tear down the effects of these electoral theatrics. But instead, what we're seeing is uh, on, on social media, you hear they did it before, we're just re on a reprisal attack. And I ask myself, where are we going with this? Sort of, you know, we, they've done it before and we're doing it back to them as though these people who did it before are not Nigerians or as though Nigerians did not vote at this poll who did it before and voted you in to do something differently. And this is where I'm actually very afraid. I'm very afraid because if we keep shaping the course of our selection process like this, we will soon have a very divided Nigeria, divided along both ethnic, religious, and political lines. And if we're not careful, we might just have catastrophe in our hands. I expected, because I cannot be the landlord of a house and my tenant is dirty. The first thing I do as a landlord is to ensure that there's no debt in my environment so that any other debt place in the environment will be conspicuous. Yeah. And whoever place post that debt there will be well noticed. Okay. But when the landlord begins to create debt and the tenant begins to add his own debt, I really want to blame the landlord. Because, Oga, you are dating your own environment. I mean... The ruling party ought to have done something differently. Let Nigerians shame PDP if they must. 
by seeing that the evidence of electoral misconduct were actually from this people. And then to be proven that this is actually perhaps part of the DNA of the men and women who are in this party. But you have not proven differently. And what we see is electoral racketeering. Uh, 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 a prelude to the election was so, on, on social media, it was so easy to tell that we were perhaps looking at, okay, for example, you just spoke about election, a result inconsistency. Didn't that happen in the last election in Edo State? There were, they were results inconsistency posted by INEC, and at the end, there were a lot of minuses. And who are these minuses? You also vote. Where are the voters? Where is it reflecting? Till today, that was not answered. It baffled and shook my sensibility how both the judiciary and uh, the Supreme Court squashed that particular case. I don't know. But you have the burden of evidence. I mean, the barrister will tell us more. And that, that is where the, yes. the issue of fact and proof yes. is different yes. anyway. Yes. But, yes. I mean, we are not heading forward politically. Okay, let me push it there. Uh, barrister Adair, sir, the most uh, outstanding issue that has attracted comments, reactions, and counter reactions is the allegations of vote buying on both sides of the divide. That's, that's very prominent, or that was very prominent in that election. Uh, this is gradually being entrenched in our political space. We used to hear that at a distance, but it looks like it's something that is gradually becoming a norm in our political space. You want to comment on that? It has become a bazaar. People now amaze with money. They stockpile money meant for developmental projects, for societal development, for human capacity building. They keep it to buy human rights. Vote is actually a human right item. It's not to be sold. It's to be protected in a very sacrosanct way. When you buy people's votes, what we have just done is that you have you are, in, you are engaged in political slave trade. You have bought the people. When you buy human rights, you have bought the person. What slaves don't have is the right to do what they want, free will. When you now buy somebody's votes, you've actually acquired a slave. In reality, that is the, that is the, that is the practical uh, consequence of that transaction. If you take slaves to the slave market during the slave trade era, the owner is in control of the life and uh, the wishes of that slave. When you also sell your votes, who would have been your tool of controlling those you elect? You have lost that control over the elected representatives. You have become their slave. They are no longer your servant. That is what transpires when you sell your votes. And that vote could be sold openly to the extent that a, a, an international media field like BBC could even play the video clip of the shameful transaction I think a nation that is responsible, with responsible leadership, should be worried. I felt ashamed as a Nigerian when I saw BBC showing me Nigerians selling their rights in the open market. And they quoted the amount they are being given. They interviewed some of them. Some of them were throwing their rappers or oh, running to go and collect their location. Look, you are actually running into slavery. That's what they are doing. Let me tell you something about votes buying and vote selling. Those monies, whose monies are there? Whoever invests is entitled to recoup his investment and make profits. If they have commercialized their votes, they should understand how business operates. No foolish man will even invest, not to talk of a wise man, and not expect returns on investment. Once they acquire these people's votes, they treat them like livestock. The return investment is what the people would have been entitled to from leadership. That has been sold out. You have sold out good roads, you sold out maternity, you sold out good health care, you have sold out good schools. So you have actually sold the present and the future generation of your children. The future of your children. Because if there are no schools, good schools, your children's future is, uh, is, is in jeopardy. If there are no good hospitals, when you fall sick and you are rushed to a clinic and they tell you there is no even paracetamol, the consequence is that you are most likely to die of a treatable disease. This is the consequence of sales of votes. I hope those who are in, uh, indulging, indulging in this, in this uh, modern slave trading should understand that they are actually the victims of that transaction. 
Not those buying. Those buying are like uh, the Sherlock of old. They are vile merchants. If you are a mafia, you are, you are trafficking in drugs, you deal on drugs, most of them do not allow their children to go close to it. The victims are actually those of other people in the society. They are the people in the society. These are the real victims. They are the beneficiaries of that illicit trade. So vote buyers are the ultimate beneficiaries. Vote sellers are the ultimate victims. Okay. If you just join us, you're run to TMI Monday. We're looking at the just concluded the state governorship election in retrospect, particularly against the background of allegations of vote buying. That was a very prominent issue in the election. Now, let's look at it this way, Paul. Um, power, they say, belongs to the people, which means ideally the people reserve the prerogative the discretion to give it to whoever they pleases. But that seems to be um, in the books, not in reality. Is it that despite the level of education, level of awareness, the people don't realize that when they collect money for their votes, it translates to some of the key issues that Barista Edegis have raised, or what do you think is influencing this cash for vote that we see gradually being entrenched in our political space? I want to believe that merchandising your franchise is an offense. I want to believe so. Because um, there are some persons who won't sell theirs. But when an overwhelming majority sell theirs, the culminating effect transcends to every person involved. And I'm not going to ascribe blame, really, in true sense of it, to the electorate. There's a reason why I'm a father to my child, and my child has to lean on me for wisdom. Because when you are in power, everything is given on to you, and it's hope that you will orchestrate what the, the paraphernalia of powers have given to you in a way and manner that it should benefit the people you govern. So when you create a system where poverty is entrenched, naturally, a hungry man will sell his votes. Because these people don't feel directly connected to their tongue. They feel like it belongs to a class of people. So whether, it is, whether you sell or you don't sell, results will be tainted towards the direction the, 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 the leaders want it to be tainted. Okay. So why not just, the, 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 the mentality of, why not just sell it, hold something, and let them have their thing because they will have it with, with or without you, becomes an entrenched value in their mindset. And if we're not careful, we're gradually brewing a system where an El Chapo will become president in this country. What I mean by an El Chapo in quotes here is a criminal. All he needs is amass wealth, keep the money. And of course, if he has no history of, um, of criminality, because of course these days people can easily conceal their crime and all that, it means that with such money bags, our positions of authority will soon be held by very vile men and women. And how do we speak of a society? When a society where one could okay, we're expecting moral good, when vile men and women are in political offices calling the shots. This is particularly, in recent time, it became more like an established norm in becoming a voted leader of any quest. Before now, the issue of electoral merchandise was there, but very subtle. You don't, it wasn't this polling center. In fact, I was meant to understand a long time ago that if you go to the polling unit and you speak of a candidate at that place, you could be arrested. You know, that value died and was, and was replaced by when you go to polling unit, you'll be giving money to. And just as it played out in the last Edo State governorship election, where there was a lot of merchandising of votes at the polling centers, it moved to Ekiti. And I'm very sure after I get it to move somewhere else where elections will come up. And it's going to very soon become the umbrella number which we vote in people. And most, most regrettable here is this. How do you budget money for a hungry set of people or people who actually lack the understanding that they call the shot, they have the will to put you there? How do you knowingly use their money to buy their rights from them? 
Meanwhile, this same money would have gone into humongous developmental projects, and yet we travel around the world, take selfies. These are political leaders. Travel around the world, take pictures, and shamelessly they come back and they have the country filled with water erosion and bad leadership that they have orchestrated. Now, it's easy for you to want to blame the leaders of the past. What happened to change? You promised change. Okay. I expected an unbiased INEC. I expected the police force to be police force indeed. I did not in my thoughts ever expect that there would be mass mobilization of other states, uh, men and women, to equity. In a those states, I particularly saw hundreds of buses lined up across the city heading for equity a day to their mega rally. And these people don't have valid vote in equity. But what were they going to do in equity? But I'm glad you said they were heading for the rally. They were heading for the rally. That's part what? of the party structure. Good. Part to, of the party structure. To mobilize and the people in the that state. The truth is, it is easy to also project and pray that this poll did not return that day after the rally. You this poll stayed you, back in the You, you can substantiate that. Well, as much because as you said you saw them going, but yes, you didn't see them return. This is one of the problems we have in this country. Mm. We, let, we do things by the book. When we know in the true sense of it, it has been circumvented. Can you and I knowingly say that this poll returned and did not influence the elections of Ekiti? They did not mar the election of Ekiti and pull it in its with violence, that they did not orchestrate stealing of ballot buses, or they did not influence the decisions of the Kitty people, that they did not become the full soldiers who were doing the canvassing for money sharing. Several of it Zavis, is difficult to several of Zavis, the or Some of Zavis have commended the conduct of the election by way of the electorate trooping out en masse to participate. Is that a good score point for that election? How, how does this make a good score point when these people were induced to come out? I think what we should celebrate, if they came out and announced to vote, what we should celebrate naturally is that they came out to vote consensuously. But if you have made it popular that by tomorrow there will be so and so amount of money shared in the polling unit and my neighbor doesn't have soup in his house, the other one doesn't have garden in, in, in their house, they, they will come out to come and collect the money. It doesn't mean they've come out for the true essence of coming okay, out to let vote. Let me pause you there. But I said, there you, sir. Uh, you seem to have some reservations about the comment that he made earlier that um, the people uh, collect money because there seems to be this conviction of whether I collect the money or I don't collect the money, those who are in charge, they already have a predetermined direction for the outcome of Absolutely. the election. Yes. You, are, you are very right. I have a lot of reservation. I do not subscribe to that line of reasoning or school of thought that says of votes is as a result of uh, the poverty status of the seller. Look, and again, I, I do not also believe or support the idea that if I don't sell it, they will get there after all. So let me just sell it. That you will be captured into slavery should not now give you the obligation as a, as a victim to now voluntarily <laughs> endorse your captivity. Put a, a seal of uh, approval on it. You should protest, even to the, from the point of being captured to the point you will be delivered as a slave. That makes you somebody who do not want to be enslaved. If you are jubilating on your way to captivity, you are celebrating singing Hosanna, it means you are enjoying it. You are justifying your cap, your cap, uh, the, uh, you, are, you, are, you are vilifying yourself and vindicating your captivity. If you say poverty is not the reason. I'm coming to poverty yeah, now. For, for the sales of vote, what is the reason? I say when you plead poverty mm. as an excuse for selling your rights mm -hmm. and your liberty, you can only expect greater poverty. Okay. As no man prosper in captivity and slavery. Absolutely. I'm poor today because I'm poor. I, I sell my vote to my oppressor, aiding and abetting my own captivity. What is the guarantee that I will not be poorer tomorrow? Because there is no going to be return on investment that is positive mm. on that transaction. In any case, a vicious circle. Perhaps your poverty today was because of the, decision, the stupid decision you took yesterday. If you voted wisely yesterday, you would have voted people of morals, not people of means. When you now vote the highest bidder in the past, and the highest bidder as a businessman is recouping his investment, that's why you are not finding roads. You are not finding God. You are not finding job for your children. You are not finding social welfare. Are you not an architect of your own misfortune? Don't you think the poverty you are pleading was actually erected and established and imposed on yourself by you? Because I knew when I was little in primary school, Professor Ambrose Ali was a governor. 
He gave us free education. Until at a point in time, this present uh, head of state became a, a military uh, leader by coup. And he, 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 he truncated that, uh, that benefit. He stopped the whole free books and free pencils. We are having everything free, even the school chairs. We are not paying anything. That was possible because people elected leaders conscientiously, who in turn gave back to the society. From the beginning, from the period of Nigeria started voting for merchants, political merchants, we started seeing the collapse of infrastructures, collapse of uh, leadership uh, responsibility. And you are in turn now complaining that you are a victim when you are actually the perpetrator and you colluded with the oppressor to rob yourself. Do you have the right, the moral right to cry poverty that you inflicted on yourself? Let me tell you, those who are selling votes now, they have not seen poverty. If that is the reason why they sold those votes, they are yet to see poverty. Because the Naira rate is, uh, the exchange rate is, uh, is, is going up, the dollar is going up, the Naira is going down. With the sale of votes and the collapse of uh, responsible leadership, economy will go down. Poverty will, ag will aggravate. Then in future, they might not be able to even walk to the point where the sales will take place. They will be crippled by poverty. They can't even crawl there anymore. Because if you are still breathing mm. and you want to take away the oxygen that is left in you because you are poor, you can only die. That would be suicide. So, uh, poverty is not a defense. Poverty should have been able to prove that uh, asium right, that a hungry man is an angry man. Mm -hmm. Who should you be angry with? It is the person who made you to, to be, suffer to the hungry in the first place. If the time to pay him back would have been the time to say, vote for me. Yeah. Now you are going to patronize your, 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 your political uh, oppressor. Yeah. And you are pleading poverty. You are let not utilizing your anger for it because you have to be angry with the person. Let, who let, me, let, me, just, let me just draw this analogy. Um, in recent times, we have seen states controlled by the opposition party conduct local government elections. It went the way it has always been. And now here we are with the kitty, going the way it has always been. The government in power which has control over all the institutions of government deploying such institutions of government to ensure that things go their own way, as some people have alleged. Yeah. What, what, do you, what do you make of this? Let me, let me get your thoughts, uh, Barista Degas. The, the negative use of authority is a, hum, is, a, is a hallmark of tyranny. And democracy is the direct opposite of tyranny. You can't miss the two and achieve democracy. When you miss democracy with tyranny, you can only get tyranny as the sole item. There is no tyrannic democracy or democratic tyranny. It's like taking pond water and missing it with spring water. What you get is colored water. That, pure, that very pure and uh, crystal clear water you took to mix with the bad water will not reflect when the mixture takes place. Yeah. It becomes bad water. So that is what tyranny or tyrannic uh, activity causes to democracy. Anybody thinking that democracy can be mixed with this kind of uh, tendencies, and you still say we are operating democracy, mm. it's a, it, 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 it doesn't know what democracy is all about. Okay. Like, let me tell you again that the very idea of deploying whatever might, whether state might, local might, or international might, to truncate the will of the people is an aberration to democratic, uh, constitutional democracy. So the deployment of these 30,000 policemen was not actually to secure anything. But that's what they said. Because they were not security at the end of the day. We saw yeah. the video clip of snatching of ballot papers and destruction of paper, uh, spilling of the papers. I mean, ballot papers and the destruction of ballot boxes. If you have 30,000 policemen in the kitty, that leads to state. That is policemen alone. You have DSS deployment. You have detachment of military. You have a montant. You also have civil defense. 
If you put it together, you might be having even uh, Navy, naval people there. The entire Nigerian uh, force were present in a little, little equity. A fly not ought to have access to a ballot box. A flying uh, object, not talk of a human being that is as, as big as even a uh, Akia Popo. You will cite it, you, you spot such person. So if those activities took place in the midst of those people, it means there was collusion. Okay, let's, let's not uh, jump into conclusion on that one, but let me bring uh, Paul uh, on here. Uh, in, in all of these, what, in your opinion, are the far-reaching implications, or what are the implications of all of this, particularly the vote buying on both sides of the divide? What does, it, what does this pertain for subsequent elections, particularly 2019? It's only in a political utopia that you will blame the very uneducated, unaware electorate. Much as you can make sound statements and rationalize your vote, doesn't say that the majority of the people who have equal power vote with you will do the same. Now, knowing that we have this scenario where a vast majority do not understand the value of their votes, the political actors of the day and the gladiators have seen this as an opportunity to cash in on constant retaining of power because they have seen it that these people are vulnerable they are only vulnerable because they don't have what it means to substantiate the value of what their term would translate to so when this continues in perpetuity which i think it will because currently we are having actors with wide experience on vote purchasing and vote distribution in home of affairs. So when you have this, and it's going to be nurtured, we are gradually heading for a political doom, a situation where democracy itself will have to take a new definition in Nigeria. Because this constant muscling of the will of the people will remain because these people are vulnerable. We are not in Europe here or America or Canada. We are even a 13-year-old child who is not uh, empowered to vote, understands what his or her vote means, where they vote along policy lines, where they vote along certain principles and policies that will affect their lives. Yeah, we're still talking about ball water, construction of road, repair of gutter, empowerment of our youth in the guise of sharing money for them to do one or two uh, medium businesses or small scale business that will not in, in a roundabout translate to anything. Well, it is still the people itself that are the victim of those who are much more educated and enlightened than them and they have the power and the corresponding financial power to continually orchestrate their political agenda and as such i want to adduce that there will come a time where the constantly ostracized political elite group by the fortunate political elite group will find no option than to try to balance the equation of this power that is lopsided courtesy the might of those in power and when that happens, you might find yourself, this country might be heading for divisions we are in, uh, 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 there'll be empowerment of miscreants and, and whatever you call them to actually try to take power by force. And when this happens, there'll be too much of uh, uh, military crackdown on some persons or police crackdown on some persons and might translate to their support group as constant muscling. And then you'll be encouraging and brewing insurgency unknowingly. And if we are not careful, this practice, if continued and nurtured, if it becomes the beam of 2019 election, it might be after 2019 election, the who says that someday some people will not get so aggrieved and align with countries who seek to divide Nigeria. We had Paul talking about um, this whole gamut of discussion surrounding the level of awareness of uh, the people relating to their selling of votes and its implications for 2019. You want to establish the point? Well, it, it's, it, it's, not, it's not out of place to imagine that we, we, we might be unknowingly setting a pace wherein, if we are not careful, we might have a Rwanda issue in our hands uh, because we already have pockets of insurgents and um, divided groups in Nigeria. Uh, we have from the north to the west, the south and the east, taking different coloration for their agitation okay. and uh, our policies or our level of governance might just become a central rallying point for these people to want through their scality okay. if this issue of a side of the country 
or a political elite group who are fortunate to have power and the other ones who are also elite but not in power but they have the financial will to both keep squatting for power and we might just get that in our hands and it's always easy for those who have the means to lure those who don't have the means yes. into their war okay. they won't fight it they will pay for it to be fought okay uh, Mr. Degas, how do we address this issue uh, i heard someone say on saturday that to discontinue or discourage votes by what we need to do is to have a secret, secret ballot system. But that what we have now is called open secret uh, ballot system, which, if you look at it critically, is actually not an open secret. You do accreditation openly, you go vote secretly. But what you have is that even in the place where you're supposed to vote secretly, is open. So you find agents who will stand by and watch if the electorate actually voted for that candidate or not so that he gets the reward that he's supposed to get or if the person had collected money when he's going to vote they watch the person keenly to be sure that the person actually voted for them how, how do you think we can checkmate this in your opinion there is nothing to checkmate there it is a sign of a failed system so is this a hopeless because situation? Is it a hopeless situation? So it appears, but it's not that it's, it will be hopeless to the extent that the victims are aiding and abetting their own frustration by patronizing the oppressors. We have described a scenario. Secret ballot is our system, as entrenched in the Electoral, electoral Act and the Constitution. That agent now has access to how you put your thumb on your ballot paper is with your consent and with the collusion of the, those who are able to manage the elections. It's actually a secret ballot. It is not open secret. When you pick your paper, you go to the, to, the, to the corner where nobody sees you except yourself. But I tell you, these people who are now indulging in sale of their rights, they even back on the man who pay them to come and see. To watch. Because to you watch. must watch your investments. <laughs> Otherwise, that is evidence for you to, is the ticket to get your money. So when you are now helping your oppressor to monitor your rights because you have sold your right to him, there's little me can do to help you. I can't force you not to sell your rights. Those who would have enforced that uh, electoral act, uh, criminalizing, provision of criminalizing that transaction, they actually colluded. They are the agents of the states. It is not out of place when you see a security man now aiding and uh, I mean, uh, providing security to electoral talk. Or they now work as partners in, the, in electoral criminality. Most of those people were snatching and destroying ballot paper that day. They were not, they were not harassed. They said the security of agents or operatives, look, they, they looked away, look the other way. What that means is that they were actually deployed to facilitate such uh, negativities. If that is the situation, it's not, it's the, nothing is wrong with the, with the system as, as written, stipulated in the law. It is at the, at the level of enforcement and implementation. Where the executive order is to the effect that you are deploying troops to safeguard the interests of a particular political uh, personality or group, then you are, you, are, you are working closer to Somalia. The ideal situation would have been if a policeman sees anybody interfering with anybody casting a vote, they pick you up. What are you, why are you, why are you peeping at what he's doing? And when the policeman is not even holding the cash, maybe. It's in custody of the electoral bribe cash. And he's disbursing And his own percentage is already inscribed on the, on, the, on the currency. That if you are able to dispose 2 million, 5% goes to the... Well, they, we, we can't substantiate that here on the program. Look, but sub I said, substantiate. Yeah. I'm, only, I'm only creating... I'm, I'm only okay, you are giving, to, yes, giving an scenario, instance. Yes, okay, yes, scenario. Yes. Okay. A, a mad picture of but, what would have been going on. Yes. Because if you have 20 checkpoints on a stretch of one kilometer road, and 10 trailer of a contraband would pass through, and that checkpoint was not, were not dismantled. You can only but conclude that maybe the smugglers and these security men are partners <laughs> in this business, because there is no miracle that will make them disappear with uh, how many feet trailer in the broad daylight and passing through those chains of uh, checks, yeah. like the, the invasion of the National Assembly. Yeah. The security check, if you are good at the visitor, the check you will go through. You can't even go and pick any item there. That's so true. if those people make free ingress and egress on, on the stop, you can only conclude that there was collusion 
Because nobody who does not have a disappearing act mm -hmm. will do that successfully. And we were not told that they vanished because we saw the clip of how they were operating. They were not ghosts. They were real human beings. They, they, they were accompanied by a city that we all know. So if a situation like that is, is happening at the pulling units with overwhelming presence of security operators and INEC officials, we have no other logical conclusion to draw down. Oh, it is uh, a robust, uh, syndicated business. Okay. Let, let, let me get your uh, final words on uh, what's your recommendations on what can be done to checkmate this? Because 2019 election is just around the corner. I've heard people say that uh, what just transpired is a dress rehearsal mm. of what 2019 will be like. I don't know the uh, indices for making such, um, such deductions as it were, but let me get your thoughts along those lines on how you think we can checkmate this system of vote buying which we have agreed here that is inimical to the development of democracy in our country uh, at, at the risk of sounding stereotype i'm actually feeling very uncomfortable answering that question because it won't it won't it won't implementation will still remain zero i will only speak for myself so is, that a, hopeless, my vote. is that a hopeless situation please come to my polling units come and see boys selling vote for such of chelsea you will talk, then they, you, you see the knife in their hands, they tell you who you be. So why should I make, uh, why should I abuse the way forward when I know it's just going to amount to talk infestation without it. manifestation? For me, I will just vote. But I've told myself, I'm not voting again in Nigeria. Because I know my vote will count. I'm not encouraging you not to vote. But I will not vote again. I will only keep your voter's card that means for that transactions. You, but that means that you have given up on your country. See, Where is the patriotic spirit? Patriotic you, spirit. You admit to the fact that the country has given you so much. Only the, right, living, like only the living, only the living can testify of anything good or bad. First for me, it is the survivor of trying to keep my head But you realize that whether you vote or not, whatever policies that come, with you is binding on you. If so I why vote, you just, why don't you just vote? The question is, has the system been sanitized so that I have faith in my vote? So if you don't, if you don't vote, you don't do anything. How will the system get sanitized? All that's I, what people say. All that's I, what people say. All I just do is cross my leg, take a bottle of kunu, and be watching the country. Mm. Well, let those who want to fix it, fix we'll it. When they fix it, there, they will take it from hey, us. Let them take the kunu away, no problem, sir. <laughs> because there's hardly, there's hardly nothing because I can do. I've heard, I've heard people say, uh, prior to 2019, the civil society activists, the uh, civil society movement, a lot of leaders of thought, the academicians, the pro you just name them, they were criticizing the polity. They were criticizing the system. They felt that the way things were going wasn't the way it was supposed to be. Eventually, when the military said they were going to hand over power, many of them didn't believe that the military would hand over power. And so they were, they, they were watching from a distance. And then all kinds of people took over the political space. That's how we have been from 1999 till date. There's some level of refinement going on. Mm. But we need to get many, many more people involved. People who are decent, who are morally upright, mm. who have integrity. They need to get involved if the status quo must change. I strongly believe that, Paul. Uh, yes. sir, sorry, sir. I will differ. This remains beautiful talk. Yeah. We have beautiful ideas and our implementation strategy is always zero. Have you actually contested elections, sir? I have. A situation where people who determine whether you get a party ticket are senile, old, uneducated, who have no smart ideology, but they're the one who will determine whether you get that ticket or not. And when they use languages like, ah, this one too, it's too sharp, you know, lawyer, you are gone. And then there are several of your types whom they will assassinate politically because you are outspoken, you are sound, and of course, perhaps maybe you stand against impunity in any form, in any way. Yeah. And we have a system where we have also somehow built courtism along our political divide, such that it is no news that in this country, a lot of persons patronize these affiliations because of political powers. Yeah. And the question is this, when you buy something, or you steal a product, you will always hide it when you're using it. You can't use it publicly, you yeah. will be happy, there will be no glory in such usage. So they will never, I don't believe, that there will ever come a time where decent men and women, in quotes, will find themselves campaigning and Nigerians will vote consensuously 
and defend but such but votes. But there are several of them already in the political have space. And I've also, I also told occupied. those types yes. that until there is sanity in the electoral process, yes. they are welcome to try. Okay, let me let me get to Mr. Matthew. I do not let me believe, get your thoughts. I do yeah. not believe that the case is hopeless. Mm. Before now, before this present dispensation, the 2015 election was acclaimed to be a very wonderful milestone in African democratic history. When you are moving from progress to retrogression, it does not cancel the fact that there was a, the reality of progress. If you have produced a first class student in a class, and suddenly you, the next class are no longer able to read and write, it doesn't mean that that school was never good. It means the standard has dropped. What you need to do as a, a proprietor of a school or a administrator is to look at the indices and bring back those things, those values, or those standards that, that is collapsing. You, you up this, the game. In 2015, Nigeria was adjudged as a country that has made Teku Jan strike mm. in a democratic uh, advancement. Mm. And suddenly, the British envoy or the American envoy was interviewed by Shell. Say, why are you people interested in this election? They said they want Nigerian democracy to build on the gains of 2015. That the whole world applauded that feat. That they wanted to be better than that. Mm. And what we are seeing now is a reverse, I say nose diving. This is what we should condemn. That is what we must discourage. I'm not going to say we should stay away from participation in election, electoral process. No. That, that is a defeatist approach. Mm. South Africa overcame apartheid after a long stretch of struggle, not a hundred meter dash. If you leave the, the stage for the oppressor, <laughs> no oppressor will voluntarily become good. The only way they will stop sometime is when there is constant resistance. Mm. Once you are having a constant mosquito bite, you can't sleep, have a good sleep. Mm. So let us be the political mosquitoes, righteous mosquitoes, that will keep singing strong uh, so, uh, noise into the ear of the, the deaf oppressors. When we keep biting and, uh, and disturbing them, they will no longer be comfortable sitting, uh, gaining balance on our liberty. One day they will say, I'm tired of this thing. Let me change this room. That, or, uh, that is, if they don't buy a good fit. So if you don't buy a good fit. If you make them sit comfortably undisturbed, yes. they could be there to attend it. All right. All right. Gentlemen, thank you so much for the insights that you brought to bear on the conversation this morning on a Kitty State governorship election in retrospect. It's been very, very uh, robust conversation here this morning. But as you know, the thoughts, opinions conversed here are entirely those of those expressing them. Uh, if you're here, you also have the opportunity to be in the studio. You do exactly the same thing. Express your own opinion. They are never those of the station. But as it is, we all must continue to work and contribute to the development of our nation, irrespective of how we feel or how we see things. Because uh, evil will always prevail when good men sit down and do nothing. That has been part of our history. But interestingly, go to the National Assembly, go to different levels of governance. You find men and women of integrity who are making their contributions to the development of our nation. All we just need is to have more of such people. We have more of such people in the executive, in the legislature, in the judiciary, and other institutions of governance. Certainly, uh, all of these challenges that we have today will be drastically reduced and in no distant time will be a thing of the future, a thing of the past. But if you sit down and do nothing, and just think that, well, because we've had this series of uh, events that seems not to be changing, and just think that, well, the, the miracle will happen overnight, you'll be, you'll be amazed, nothing will happen. Painfully, the policies and programs that these guys will bring to bear will be binding on you. So I think I'd rather take the path of making my contribution to the polity, irrespective of how it turns out. Believe me that as I do that consistently and conscientiously, and many other people follow suit, the desired transformation will come. Big thanks to Barrister Matthew Degas for coming. Thanks for Paul Okubawa, thank you, very thank much, you so sir. much for coming on the show. That's what we call it a wrap on the show today. I hope you had a great time with us. 
Thank you so much for staying with us. Do have a beautiful, beautiful week ahead. Bye for now.